Hey guys, I hope everyone is having an awesome day. And recently we hit 400 subscribers. So I decided for 400 subscribers, I'll be doing a little bit of a Q&A, but where I just tell you a little bit about myself and hopefully answer some questions that you might be having. So yeah. And don't worry, I will soon be doing a Q&A where actually you guys ask me the questions, but for now I'll just tell you a little bit more about myself. So let's get into the video. So right here I just have a few notes and I'm just going to use this to make sure I'm covering everything that I want to talk about. First, I am currently 14 years old and I've been yoing for about two and a half years. Now here's my story about how I began yoing. So I got a yo-yo as a gift once and one day I was bored and started fooling around with it. And I started looking up like some t tutorials online just to see like what I could do. And I just began to learn more and more tricks and got more and more hooked on it. My first yo-yo ever was the Duncan Butterfly XT. Um, I actually don't have that yo-yo anymore, but yeah, that was my first yo-yo ever. And then when I really started getting into yo-yoing, I got the Yo-Trick Sage. A few months later, I was just totally hooked on yo-yoing itself. So my yo-yo birthday is April 10th. Another thing that people ask me a lot about is, Jonathan, why do you use the shutter for competition? So I've competed three times in my life. So once at Worlds, once at Illinois in March, I believe, for 2016, and then recently in November for the another Illinois State Yo-Yo Contest. And all three times I've used the Yo-Yo Factory shutter. And here's why. So there's a couple things when I was looking for a Yo-Yo to do competition with that I found in the shutter. So one was the price. So since the shutter is just $45, I was able to easily buy two yo-yos. So one for competition and one for backup. Many players feel this way and I agree. You want your backup yo-yo to be the same as the one you're competing with so that both yo-yos feel the same if you do happen to do a switch. So say you had like a really like fast playing yo-yo and then your backup was like a really like slow and like relaxed yo-yo, it would feel just really different. So the reason I like the shutter is because it was so cheap I could easily afford two yo-yos, one for backup and one for competition. So the next thing that drove me towards the shutter was the shape. So the low walls made it able to play very fast, spin long, and do horizontal tricks. So these qualities are really critical for my style of play, which is more technical based, getting clicks, and pretty much like fast tricks. So I needed, I really needed those aspects of the shutter. The final aspect was this. Yeah. Wait. So the shutter is a very wide yo-yo, and I believe that competition's yo-yo should be wide so that you can have a higher probability of landing your tricks. It makes sense. When you're on the stage and nervous, it's incredibly easy to mess up, but with a wide yo-yo, it really increases the probability of you landing all your tricks. If you have yo-yo that's super thin, then there's so much little area to land your trapeze and whatever else. So I found that the shutter was great because it was so wide I could easily land tricks. So all those factors work together and that is how I decided to choose the shutter for competition. Do I play any other styles of yo-yoing? Yes, but kinda. I do not compete with any other style than 1A. However, I really enjoy playing 3A and 4A, but definitely not looping because Let's be real, I suck at that. And 5A has never really appealed to me, so I don't do much about that. I've thought about competing in 3A before, and I think I will, because there's not very many 3A competitors, so I think I would um, do really well. I also love the 3A, just the style of 3A, I think it's really cool, but um, the lack of practice has never really encouraged me to do so. So um, yeah, also comment down below if you want me to do a 3A video. Jonathan, why don't you do cool animated intros like other people do? Okay, so I've thought about this question a lot, and here's why. So when you click on my video, you are here for information. And I recognize that your time is really important. So that is why I get straight to the point in each one of my videos. I'm not going to have some flashy 10 second uh, intro that just has my name on the screen for you guys to watch. 
So one, if you clicked on this video, I think you all know who made the video. And two, I'm not going to waste your time with some intro. You guys want information and that is why you are going to get that from the very first second of the video. I do outros that tell you like my Instagram and etc. But the reason behind that is, is that now the video is over, you have all the information from the video. The outro is simply there to ask for your feedback and my contact info. Just to make the video a little bit more complete. All in all, I'm not trying to knock anyone who has intros. Intros can be super cool and entertaining. I'm just expressing my take on that. And yeah, that's why I don't do intros. Jonathan, why don't you make regulation tricks and trick letter tricks like Cleegy Boat, Spirit Bomb, and Black Ops and more? Alright, so here's why. There are many, many professional tutorials out there that are fantastic for making tutorials for these tricks. Usually made by people that have been yo-yoing much longer than me and know every aspect about these regulation tricks. I don't. They have a much higher budget, better equipment, and more experience, and are overall better at making these tutorials. Instead, I make tutorials for my own tricks because they are hopefully things that you've never seen before. I don't want to teach you a trick that you can find hundreds of other tutorials for on the internet that may seem almost the exact same thing. I want to teach you my tricks that are unique and not ones that others have already made. Well, hopefully that wraps up some of the questions you guys have. And if you have any other questions, leave them down below in the comments section. I won't be able to answer all of these questions, but I will put them for sure in my Q&A video when I do so. And that's where I will answer them. So yeah, just to clarify, if you have questions, leave them down below in the comments. I may respond to a couple of them if they're like really fast questions, but for the longer questions, I'll be putting those for sure in my Q&A video once I do so. When I do a Q&A video, your questions will be in there. Well, that is it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I post weekly videos on Saturdays. If you guys are enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe, and that would be awesome. Well, that is it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.